More on Hope Hicks' resignation in coming weeks. Let's get uh, this statement from White House Chief of Staff John Kelly. The general said this, When I became Chief of Staff, I quickly realized what so many have learned about Hope Hicks. She is strategic, poised, and wise beyond her years. She's 29 years old. She became a trusted advisor and counselor and did a tremendous job overseeing the communications for the president's agenda, including the passage of historic tax reform. Hope Hicks has served her country with great distinction. To say that she will be missed is an understatement. Hope Hicks putting out this statement saying there are own, no words to adequately express my gratitude to President Trump. I wish the president and his administration the very best as he continues to lead our country. Let's bring in former Trump 2016 deputy campaign manager Dave Bossy. Dave, your reaction to Hope Hicks resigning? Well, you know, I'm surprised uh, and I'm shocked by it uh, and I'm saddened by it. Uh, Hope Hicks is one of the greatest uh, people that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Uh, Hope is an incredibly smart, thoughtful, dedicated uh, American patriot. And, and I love Hope Hicks. She is uh, one of my dear friends. Uh, she has had an incredible odyssey, uh, an incredible ride in history uh, with this president all throughout his campaign, was one of the first people to join the campaign. I got to meet her many years ago. Uh, and she has come such a long way. Uh, I, I, I'm just so proud of Hope, uh, so proud of the job that she has done. Uh, her, her dedication to this president and to making America great again uh, is second to none. And yeah. so I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that she's leaving this White House, but I know that she's going to help this president from the outside like lots of us do. You know, it's a, one of the toughest jobs in D.C., <laughs> it, Dave. It is, you know, yes. I mean, you've worked in through D.C., <sighs> Yeah. Personally, I've reported uh, on D.C. for three decades off and on. It is a terribly tough job. Uh, she got roped into the Don Jr. meeting with the Russian lawyer with dirt on the Hillary Clinton uh, campaign. Uh, that also Rob Porter, domestic abuse, now House Intelligence. Did it, do you think it just became too much for her? Well, I don't. I, you know what? I haven't talked to Hope today, but I can say that I would fully expect that that's a lot for any one person, right? I mean, yeah. I, 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 it is the toughest job, being the communications director, being the White House chief of staff. Those are incredibly difficult jobs for very seasoned, experienced people. Hope is incredibly uh, diligent and incredibly smart. And, and, and this person, and, and Hope Hicks, I could not find a better person to be working in that White House with this president. And I'm so proud yeah. to be able to call her my friend. You know, Dave, the headlines tomorrow are going to be dozens of people resigning or leaving the White House over the last year. One tally has it as 37. Hope Hicks would make, make it 38. Uh, what would be your reaction to those headlines? Well, you know, after a year in the White House, there's there's always uh, transition. There's always people coming and going. You know, hope is hope is an incredibly close uh, ally inside that White House of the president has the president's ear. No one has the president's ear more than Hope Hicks. And I know that he, uh, you know, counts on her advice and counsel and she gives incredibly good advice and counsel. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm, you can count me in the Hope Picks fan club. Let's get to this push by the president to make our children safe at school. He had a bipartisan meeting on Capitol Hill. He had president talked publicly about the concealed carry, the NRA influence at school safety, uh, on school safety and all of that. Listen to this very candid conversation by the president. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. So I was just curious as to what you did in your bill. We, you don't address we didn't. We didn't address it, Mr. President. Look, I think you know we, why? Because you're afraid of the NRA, right? No, <laughs> no the issue. No, the NRA five did. years ago. Yeah, it's, never came it's, it's a big issue right now. A lot of people are talking about it. But a lot of people, a lot of people are afraid of that issue. Do you, do you see this, David? What the president just did? Whether you agree with him or not. He just held up a gigantic white spotlight and he said, basically, I'm a businessman. I'm pragmatic. I'm blunt. You may not like the way I say the message. You may hate the way I say things. I'm not a politician. I want to get to the solutions. I want to get to the answers. So, David, my point is he's not being ideological or political here. He wants it fixed, right? Well, he's trying to come up with a solution. And what he's doing by asking these questions, by, by being provocative, is to entice people at the table to not 
put to put down their preconditions to put down uh, and he did that throughout the meeting on lots of different topics not just on that one so it's how he does it and he did that on the immigration meeting last month so he does this this is what he does he wants to bring people together and he wants to say what are the logical common sense uh, uh, you know answers that we can come to as Americans uh, in this particular issue I, I'm a believer that this president is dead right when it comes to protecting our schools. We must have answers yeah. and answers now. Those legislative things that he's talking about, those take time. Those are going to take weeks yeah, and months, you know, people to, are, to, you know, and, and they're going to be litigated. Wait, wait. People are sick and tired of this story. They want it fixed. The president's saying, well, here's how I, w I want to fix it. Now, David, if the Democrats and the Republicans go into the midterms and they don't do anything on what the president's saying and making our kids safe, if they don't do anything on immigration, his ideas, he's got a solid agenda there. If they yep, go in, absolutely. what are they going to tell voters? He has the ideas and the fixes. What could they possibly say? to voters. You know, he's even, by the way, let's take a second because this is what the president is even saying about the NRA. Watch this. I'm a big fan of the NRA, but I've met, I had lunch with them, with Wayne and Chris and David on Sunday and said, it's time. We got to stop this nonsense. It's time. Okay. It's time. So what are they going to, what's Congress going to do about it? They got midterms coming up. Well, I th look, that's my my point is there are immediate fixes that this president is talking about that the Democrats are pushing back on, which is securing our schools, which is putting police officers, armed people, whether it's teachers, whether it is uh, members of the reti retired members of the military, what have you. There are immediate solutions that we can secure these soft targets from crazy people very quickly. Legislative things take time and they can be litigated. So yeah. I'm saying to you, this president wants immediate solutions. And so he is a business guy. And that's what he that's one of the reasons he got elected. He doesn't just do the Washington two-step. He says, right. we find a problem, we're going to solve a problem. And that's what makes him a tremendous leader. Yeah, I mean, Heritage Foundation says he's now on the level of Reagan in getting what he prompts to do done.